Oh my God, in you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame. No, let my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. To you I lift up my soul. Oh my God, in you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame. No, let my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. Set up. 
us free.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's a great joy to welcome you this morning to Our Lady's Church here in Ekham uh, for our morning parish mass. Uh, for this, the first Sunday of Advent, uh, the church's year has turned and we're into a new liturgical year and we begin our preparation for the great feast of Christmas. These are times, days for us of waiting, um, expectancy, hoping, hoping, hoping that the deepest desires of our hearts will be fulfilled. We have our candles burning and um, a number of intentions have come through, so I'm going to read those um, before we move then to the uh, lighting of our first Advent candle for which we have uh, a little help. So this Mass is being offered for all the people of the parish. Ed asked prayers for his wife Sue. Uh, Sue is very poorly again in hospital and he's also bringing prayers in thanks for the care uh, shown by, by staff and, and chaplains at this time. We remember Ed as well and all the family. Rick and Patsy have asked for prayers for a close friend of theirs, Genevieve Bourin. Uh, Genevieve died on Monday last uh, at home in Normandy. A few weeks ago, you might remember, we prayed for Terry's daughter, Jane, who was COVID positive. Uh, Terry brings prayers of thanks that Jane is now well again and back nursing at the hospital. Sharon brings prayers for the world that we be safe in these anxious times. Tom asks prayers for Louise, who has died in tragic circumstances uh, last week, just aged 34. Uh, so we pray for her, that she may see God face to face, and for her mom Angela, and for all the family at this time. Frida brings prayers of thanksgiving for scientists, and we've seen over the last weeks just how important that scientific work is as vaccines and are beginning hopefully to come on stream. Anne brings prayers in memory of her mum who died three years ago this weekend and asks that she rest in peace. And Gillian prays also for her mother Marie that her Marie may rest in peace with the angels and saints in God's heavenly kingdom. I remember always as we always do uh, those who've asked for prayers for private intentions and uh, candles are burning for them as well. So now we've moved into the holy season of Advent and the children from our parish school, Our Lady Queen of Martyrs, are going to help us with the lighting of the first candle and we welcome in a special way their mums and dads, their family members who are with us this morning as the children are helping us with this and again a bit later on in the Mass. So welcome to you in a very particular way. Pope Francis said, Advent is a time to prepare our hearts to receive Christ, our Saviour and our hope. As we light the first candle on our Advent wreath, we pray for hope to spread throughout the world. Dear Lord, this year has been a difficult year for lots of people for many different reasons. People who have lost families and friends for key workers who have been working throughout the pandemic, for people isolated at home with nobody to talk to, nobody to comfort them or nobody to show them love. Help us to be ready this Advent, this Christmas and into the coming year. Help each other to bring the message of hope into the world. To the world. Amen. Amen. And so, with thanks to the children, and thanks also to our music group, we now have the opening hymn of our first Sunday of Advent Mass.
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand we may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence, the mountains would melt. No ear has heard, no eye has seen any God but you act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were like all like men unclean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves, and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father, we the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your light shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your light shine on us, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cattle-bin throne. O Lord, rouse up your mind. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your light shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. God of hosts, bring us back, let your light shine on us, and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the one you have chosen. Shall never forsake you again. 
Give us life that we may call upon your name. God, our hosts, bring us back. Let your light shine on us, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ, and God is faithful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cockrow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. The observant among you will have noticed that we've just now moved from um, Matthew's Gospel, which has been uh, teaching us over the last uh, liturgical year. Now we've entered the year of the year of Mark, so Mark is going to be uh, be with us. And one of the characteristics of Mark is there's always a great deal of urgency in what he says. His Gospel goes at quite a quite a pace. Um, so words like immediately and things are very common uh, in, Mark's, in Mark's gospel. What I'd like to reflect just a little and just briefly on, on this morning is um, something that we need to be attentive to. And I think um, in the two great penitential seasons of the church, so Advent and Lent, um, that's really kind of our homework uh, to be doing uh, in these seasons as we prepare for the great feasts of Christmas now and, and Easter in, uh, in a few months time. And the homework we need to do uh, is to remember who we are. To remember the fundamental truth of who we are as God's beloved daughters, sons, children 
But that's the very core of our existence. The reason I say that this morning is really around that reading we've just had from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Now, if you were to read that uh, and not read anything that follows, but just to read that, you'd be left with the impression that this Christian community in Corinth was absolutely the bee's knees, a Christian community amongst Christian communities, a shining light. After all, Paul says those beautiful words, which are, I would say to you, just as true of our parish here as they were of the community in Corinth. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you. So these must be absolutely top-class Christians that Paul's writing to. But what he's doing, he's reminding them of who they are. He's reminding them of who they are in the eyes of God our Father. God who has joined us to his Son, Jesus Christ. And each one of us here who is baptized is joined in that intimate, complete way to Christ. And that God is faithful. That's the basis that we stand on, that whatever our own infidelities, and if you want to read on, not just the first letter to the Corinthians, but it took Paul two letters um, to get through everything that needed to be got through with that community, because all kinds of things were going on. All kinds of things that ought not to be going on in a Christian community were going on in Corinth. It was a port town with all that that meant, a great mixing pot with all kinds of different traditions and ways of religion and the whole lot was one great big melting pot and some of the Corinthians found that some of the practices um, of the other religions were also um, fun, you might say, in all kinds of ways. So Paul, in calling them back, is reminding them of who they are. God is faithful, Paul tells them. And that's our hope, that no matter how we might be unfaithful in all kinds of ways in our lives, and we have, I don't need you to say how um, sophisticated our infidelities can, can be, little bits here, little bits there. God is the faithful one, and God never ceases with all of us, with all of God's children, to constantly call us back, constantly renewing that gift of love, which is there as a free gift to us that we don't earn, we don't buy, isn't there just for the super-duper Christians or those who tend to think they're super-duper Christians and do so by trying to make other Christians feel bad about themselves. It isn't there just for those who keep all the rules all the time. It's there for all of us, struggling through life, trying to find a way, and especially in these days, but I would say to you again, one thing that these days, upsetting and confusing and frightening as they are, has brought out in our parish community and our parish family is that witness to Christ, that generous reaching out to help others in all kinds of ways. And a part of the privilege of my role here as, as your parish priest is I get to see this day in and day out, opening the front door another bag of food, opening my email, offers of help, trying to direct help where it's been offered. All of that is part of what reassures me uh, what a wonderful parish community we are. And we have then those lovely words of Isaiah. Lord, you are our Father. We the clay. You the potter. We are all the work of your hand. God is at work in each one of us. Not in a waving of a magic wand, but day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, God by our side, God loving us, God calling us, God bringing us closer to the life of God. And that we are all of us a work in progress. So, Perhaps for our homework over this 
lovely season of Advent, a season so filled with hope, so filled with the promise of the Savior to come. We might just take a moment to remember who we are, who I am, who you are as a child of God, and to be encouraged and reassured and strengthened and given new hope by that truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We profess the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Very simply now we just take a moment of prayer. We pray for the whole family to which we belong, the worldwide worldwide family of, of the church. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for our own bishop, Terence Patrick. And pray perhaps in a particular way for those who were uh, created cardinals yesterday in Rome, that they share then that ministry of service uh, that the Pope has for the church. And we give thanks that persistently now Pope Francis is choosing people from the very edges, not from the mainstream, but from the places where life is tough, life is dangerous, and where the church is really uh, breaking new ground, that they bring that experience then into the ministry of service of the church. Lord, we ask you to bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this, our parish community giving thanks that in so many ways the witness to Christ is strong here in our family in Acom. We give thanks for all who are involved in any way in reaching out to others. We pray, especially in these days, for the teachers in our parish school. We pray for those members of our parish family who are involved in nursing, who are involved in caring. We pray for all those who are caring for family, those who are caring, providing child care, those who are caring for the elderly. We give thanks to God for that great witness and ask God's blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those involved in civil authority, that they may hear the cry of the people that they are called to serve. We pray that they may make courageous decisions for the good of the whole community, not just the narrow factional interest of the few. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who experience ill health, those in mind, body, and spirit, and for all who work to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember always those who've died, we pray. We're coming now to the end of the month of November. We pray for all those whose names are in our November Book of, of Remembrance, and all those who've died, we pray for all those who grieve and who mourn. We pray for those whose anniversaries occur. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that Mary join her prayers to ours as we pray. Our Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving God, hear us as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So, sisters, brothers, let us pray together that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We have on the, um, on the altar this, this morning um, the pigs, um, which uh, belongs to the, uh, the hospital um, chaplaincy. Uh, and so we're consecrating the sacrament um, this morning as part of our Mass here, so that communion can continue to be taken uh, to those in hospital. So perhaps as we pray the Great Eucharistic Prayer, we can keep in mind also those who will receive Holy Communion from this celebration. Um, we pray for those who are able to continue to take communion uh, and for all the chaplaincy team, all the different uh, communities that are represented there in serving our sick brothers and sisters. Accept, we pray, O oh Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devotedly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just <clears throat> our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made clear, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so as children of the one loving Father, we pray as only children of God are able to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins, the sins of all the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. 
So make the act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in holy communion, please come anew into my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us to hold fast to the things of heaven, what that which endures, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, thank you for joining us for Mass uh, this morning, wherever you're, you're joining us from. Our family is always international uh, on a, a Sunday morning, and that doesn't just include people from Lancashire, I hope you understand. Um, some notices. Uh, first of all, I'll go through the, um, um, the Mass intentions for the week. This Mass, as I say, is for the people of the parish. On Tuesday, for Sister Felicity Dobson. Uh, on Wednesday for Libuza Riklikova, on Thursday for Jean Regan, it was Jean's first anniversary recently, on Friday for Tom Wall, again his anniversary, and next Sunday morning the stream mass will be for the people of the parish, and the 5 p.m. mass in the church will be for Andrew Scriven. Andrew's anniversary occurs this week also. Um, that should be a clue to you that... Um, we are reopening for public worship, and we will do so uh, next um, Sunday. Thank you uh, to all those who um, um, pointed out the error in the newsletter. At least I can see the people who are reading the newsletter, um, that obviously we're beginning um, the 5 o'clock masses again, uh, not on the 6th of November, as it says in the newsletter, but the 6th of December. Um, yeah, I, I have mixed feelings um, given the current state of, um, uh, of health and, and infections. Um, so please could I encourage you, if you are thinking of coming uh, along to Mass, and we'll have Mass on Sunday evenings and Mass on Wednesday evening, please think safety first. Please put your own care and the care of others above uh, religious observance. There is no obligation to attend Mass, either on Sundays or even great feast days like Christmas Day. Uh, so please, can we have health, health first? Um, but it will be good also to be able to, to pray again with, with, with other people present. So the, you can register to come to Mass on the website or by ringing the parish office. And we ask that that happen really, if at all possible, between 9.30 and noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays when Sue is in the, in the office. Um, there is there in the newsletter a reminder um, that in terms of hospital chaplaincy, there is a Catholic priest on call 24-7 uh, uh, at the hospital for emergencies. Uh, so that's someone who really does need urgently the care that a priest provides. And that is done by speaking with the nursing staff, asking the nursing staff uh, to page the duty Catholic chaplain. Um, but in people who don't need that emergency level of care, um, uh, Sue Ellis is acting uh, as the lay Catholic chaplain at present. Her telephone number is in the newsletter. Um, or you can ring the chaplaincy office. That number's there. And simply leave a message saying, uh, but be sure, please do be sure, um, that the person wants to see uh, a chaplain and not just think, oh, Auntie Mary's in hospital. She should see a chaplain. Um, it's always never a good experience if you come to somebody's bedside and they tell you very 
politely um, where to go to uh, and to take everything else with you while you're going. So please be sure that the person would want to um, have the, the ministry of a chaplain or of a priest. The Linda Staveley appeal, uh, we open the envelopes in the week and the amount that has come in um, from the, our parish people with who had subscribed, sponsored um, um, Linda, was £810. So added to the £700 that had already come from other sources, that raises it to just over £1,500. So that's meant uh, donations um, to St. Leonard's Hospice, uh, who are getting half of the money of £755, and our roof repair fund, an equal £755. So thank you um, on behalf of the parish. I can't really thank you on behalf of the hospice, though I'm sure they would wish me to do so. And Linda herself has asked to pass on uh, her thanks to you. Um, help for families in need, um, that's ongoing. Uh, there's a note there for um, Our Lady Queen of Martyrs School, uh, children who um, would like to have reception places or nursery places, uh, you now need to begin to um, register for that. And also you'll find there that um, there is a, a new distance learning program um, to give a qualification in pastoral ministry and pastoral ministry and, and leadership. We're moving into an era when priests are going to be far thinner on the ground uh, and we're going to need trained lay people who are able to take leadership and to help sustain our Catholic Christian communities. So if you feel that might be something that God might be calling you to and you want to know more, uh, the links are there to the, the two brochures uh, in the newsletter. But Johan, who is on the pastoral council here at Our Ladies, Johan is just about to graduate on the diploma course, so he's got experience of both the certificate and the diploma courses. And so his email address in the parish is there and um, ask him and he'll give you whatever information. And if you decide you would like to, to, um, to sign up, then please make contact with, with me. Um, I'm happy to say that there is funding available to support you, uh, the costs of the course. But the closing date is the 8th of December. I'm my fault, I'm a bit late in getting the news out to you. Um, so have a look and see. And if it would interest you, then please have a conversation. Thank you again for, for joining us. I hope the week ahead uh, treats you, you gently. Let's never forget to pray, um, not just for ourselves, but for, for each other as members of one family. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thursday is the day for people with disability. And so after the... Uh, Mass is over. There'll be a short reflection uh, prepared by one of the large communities uh, in, in Britain uh, that you might just like to, to watch and to, um, yeah, let it to, uh, just let it find a way in. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth.
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful. They will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God.